Good morning. As you can hear, we have a, one of the newest additions to our family this morning uh, for Mother's Day, and so we're grateful that Victoria and her seven-week-year-old little boy is with us this morning. So we're grateful to God for that. And as we are always, we are grateful that you're here with us this morning. Uh, just so you know that uh, we wish everyone who has had any kind of influence in a very wonderful, positive, unique way when it comes to being a woman. We are grateful for you and how you've been doing life in our lives. So let's stand together and let's worship God this morning as we spend this time thanking God for who he is. Come on, 
that's easy. Let me hear you. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Nice and loud this time. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Okay, you've had practice. It's your turn to sing it to me. Here we go. Let me hear you. Say, call upon the name of the Lord and be At a loss for words And the funny thing is It's okay The last thing I need Is to be heard But to hear What you would say Word of God speak you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness Word of God speak In the midst of you Beyond the music Beyond the noise All that I need Is to be with you And in the quiet To hear your voice Word of God speak would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness Word of God speak would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know You're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness Word of God In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word is Jesus. Y'all can sit. 
a couple things to uh, remember as we go to prayer. Remember that prayer is our conversation with God. And the reason why we have a conversation with God, and we try to do it every day, and we try to do it here in our worship experience, is so that we are reminded that God is here with us. And that God is here with us, but God also leaves with us. And that God chooses to be with all of you throughout all of this. So we pray so that we will know in our head and our hearts that God is here. But God chooses to be here because you're here. So as we go to prayer this morning, let's remember every influence that we've ever had within our lives. When it came to whether it was moms, aunts, sisters, whomever, who has had an unbelievable influence within our lives so that we could be the people that we are right now. Let's also remember those moms or those women who wanted to be moms but could never be moms in the biological sense. Or let's remember those women who said, I'm good. I don't need kids. You're the brave ones. Let's remember every single person who's ever had difficulty with pregnancy, every person who's ever had a miscarriage, every person or every woman who's ever experienced this part and this day as very, very difficult. Let's also remember we, we need to celebrate as well. Some of those very favorite people in our lives who we call mom whether it's our first mom, second mom, third mom, whomever it may be. So let's pray together. And so, God, we are grateful for the nurture, the grace, and the love that has been epitomized in women in our lives. We're grateful, God, for the tenderness. We're grateful for how, God, you have ex- shown your life in the life of women within our lives. We're grateful for their strength. We're grateful for their fortitude. We're grateful for how they chose to do life alongside of us. We're grateful for their influence. We're grateful for we're grateful for every way that God you have shown up in the lives of women around us. Because, God, we know that you show up. That, God, you exist. That, God, you are present. That, God, you choose to be with us in these moments. And in those moments where, God, it just simply seems overwhelming. And so, God, we're grateful that you are light. That, God, you are light in the midst of darkness. That, God, you are light no matter what is going on within our lives. And that, God, you are light that could never, ever be over, overcame by the darkness. That, God, you can never be extinguished. That the darkness can't comprehend how you as light continues to exist. And yet, God, there are moments within our lives where we struggle with how you can exist alongside of darkness. And yet, God, you do and you are, and you always will be. So God, in those moments where, God, we are overwhelmed, God, in those moments where we struggle, in those moments, God, where the hopelessness and helplessness of life seems to be over, overwhelming and daunting, remind us that, God, you continue to be the light in our lives. No matter where, there, or here may be. So God, we pray for the ministries of our congregation. We pray for the the influence, the impact that God, we still can have and still will have within our community. God, we pray for the ministries of this church that God, we would focus and be the light 
to not only individuals, but groups of people. That God, you would enable us to discern what is right and what is good and and the direction that we need to go in for how we will be the church, the body of Christ within our community. But also not in just this community of Delanco, but our surrounding communities as well. So God, we pray that you would enable us to know how to be the light, to be the light, when things seem overwhelming and dark. Because God, we're not just here just to play church. We're not here just to soak it all in and consume worship on a Sunday morning. But God, you have called us to a greater good. You have called us to a greater dream. You have called us to a greater go. To go and be the light. So God, encourage us. Empower us to be risk takers. Empower us to step outside of what we want to what you want. And know that, God, in the, in the power of your Holy Spirit, that we can live out those dreams. And so, God, we pray this, all of this, in your Son's name, as we pray the prayer that we always know, that we are aware of, but reminds us that we need to bring your kingdom to come here on earth. So let's pray this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So Joanne's going to come up and lead us in a song that we know from our hymnal, uh, which will be up on our screens next to me. And uh, we'll sing the first two verses of uh, Be Thou My Vision. couple announcements coming up for this upcoming week. Uh, our family fun nights tomorrow night um, from 6.30 to 8. There are snacks, games, and time of being together. This is one of those moments where we talk about vision. Expand our vision, God. Help us discern our vision. Help us to realize what you want us to realize and do what you want us to do. And this is one of the many ways that we are starting to connect with those families in our congregation to connect all of you together but also to connect people from our community to our congregation as well. So that's tomorrow night starting at 6.30. Um, Karen Eater will be here for that as well as Chrissy. And so um, Vince's wife, I I never know how to pronounce Vince's last name, so I'm sorry about that. There you go. That was good. Thank you. You did a good job with that. So uh, that's going on this upcoming week. Also, I want you to check your bulletin for other Uh, moments of ministry that are going on within our community here at at Dobbins, but also there's a list for what is needed. We're collecting supplies for this summer's handicapped evangelism, a Christian camp for children, teens uh, with disabilities. So that um, opportunity for that kind of ministry is also in your bulletin so that you're aware of what they need as well. So Mr. and Mrs. Phillips, I'm going to invite you to stand by the back doors of our, so that... That way the kids have somebody to run to instead of our teachers running after.
So our kids are dismissed for our Sunday school. Go ahead, guys, run, have fun, have a good time. Don't knock anybody over. There you go. So the ushers can meet in the back and come forward at this time to collect our offering. Again, handy evangelism is one of those ways that we support a ministry outside of ourselves. And that's some of what your offering goes to on a Sunday morning, as also as opportunities like we have with our family, fun time on Monday nights, as well as other opportunities for us to do ministry within our community. So uh, ladies, you can come forward at this time.
So when I was growing up, I knew how to push my mom's buttons, which is probably where Luke gets it from, my youngest. I knew how to push my mom's buttons. I knew, I knew how to say or do the thing that would upset her, but also to test the boundaries of her grace and love for me. Now, if you know my mom, and you've heard my mom uh, preach a couple different times, you know that there are moments where there, her grace and love for me, or I should say especially my dad, um, has always been very limitless. But I'll never forget that I, I just, I got on her nerves so bad one time that my mom picked up whatever she could find behind her. Now, you know how it is to drive with dad, right? Dad says, I'm going to pull the car over, right? My mom never gave that kind of threat ever, right? So my dad would say, I'm going to pull the, cover, the car over, and he would do this with his arm, right? right? He's, going to, he's going to try to reach behind me because I knew how to get on my dad's nerves too. Um, whether that meant putting a knee in the back of the driver's seat while he was driving, or playing my music from my earphones a little bit too loud, or ask ridiculous questions. I did ask ridiculous questions because I wanted to push his buttons too. But I remember one time that my mom did the same very same thing. We weren't driving in the car. We were actually in the kitchen at Riverside's Parsonage. Now, the Riverside's Par Riverside Parsonage was right kind of diagonal across the street from the Riverside United Methodist Church. And I'll never forget, because it was a small kitchen, and so we're standing there, and of course, I'm acting up. I'm doing something to push her buttons. You know, so much so that my mom uh, threatened, wait till your father gets home kind of moment. Well, she didn't want to wait until my dad got home to tell on me. My mom grabbed whatever she could find. She grabbed the aluminum foil box. Now, you got to understand something about my mom. My mom never, ever raised a hand to my sister I. She had every right to, by the way. We were ornery. We would act up in the pew. We would do things that would, we knew that would push her buttons and my dad's buttons while he was trying to preach. We, were, we weren't very good at being good kids. So she grabbed this aluminum foil, took a swing at me with it, of course missed me by a mile, and cut her hand. Yeah, I know. Now you feel bad for her, don't you? <laughs> well, she looked at that hand and looked at me and said, this is what you did to me. But every other moment, well, even that moment too, my mom did her very best in her life as the cheerleader, as the um, disciplinarian at times, in bedside prayers and scripture readings, as the nurturer, the comforter, the one who my sister and I still believe have, has the closest connection to God than anybody we know, to be light. And see, what was crazy, what's crazy about my mom is that my mom was a light no matter where she went. My mom had her last appointment at, um, in Bridge, uh, was in Bridgeton. And it was at First United Methodist Church in Bridgeton. If you know anything about Bridgeton, there's a cute little zoo called Cohansic, but like two blocks over from that is the worst possible street that you could live on and be. And so the street, ran, it was Church Street, by the way, it ran from, I believe, Pearl all the way down to Commerce. And at the end of that street was my mom's church. See, my mom was light no matter where she went. One night she was in her office at the parsonage and she heard some ruckus. Now I'm an old guy, so I'm going to say ruckus. There was some ruckus going on. My mom stepped out of her parsonage, out onto the street. Now you got to understand something about my mom. She knew everybody in her community. And there were two rival gangs. And you know my mom, she's like five foot nothing. She's always been five foot like nothing. She'll say she's five one. She's not five one. She's five foot. All right. She stood down. These two gangs and told them to go home. Now you got to understand something about my mom. 
My sister and I knew how to push her buttons, but you never disrespected or disobeyed my mom. Not because of an aluminum foil incident, by the way, but because of who she is and who she represents. It's been 